Hello, welcome to LCDC TV. Today we're going to be interviewing Peter Gammons, the UKIP mayoral candidate. What's London going to look like if he's mayor and what's in store for the cab trade? Hello, welcome to LCDC TV. Uh, and today I'd like to say a big hello and welcome to the UKIP mayoral candidate, Mr. Peter Gammons. Peter, welcome. Thank Thanks you ever so much for having me here. Lovely to see you. I, I see you. Uh, last week I was sitting on the top of Lawrence Fox's battle bus and you turned up in uh, in a black cab. <laughs> is that your battle cab? Yeah, it is. It's my battle cab. When, uh, when I started, they talked about why don't you get a battle bus and uh, I said, I don't want a battle bus because all the way along, even before I was nominated as, as the uh, candidate for mayor, uh, I wanted to fight for London's black cab. So I said, I don't want a bus, I want a cab. And so I got my own cab on it and we've got that thing on the back that says black cabs matter because it's so true. Because this is the historic part of London. Uh, I don't know if I can just continue and say when I was a kid, I remember my first ride in a black cab. It was like going in the Queen's chariot, you know, in the Queen's carriage. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's iconic. Wherever you go in the world, people, old black cabs that have been sold, you can find them in California, you can find them uh, in Las, Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, they use them to get married in because they are so much London. And so they're not only a part of London's history. If I'm mayor, I want to make sure that they're a part of London's future and the central to the transport in London. Well, I'm, I've got one of your manifesto leaflets and you seem to be the only mayoral candidate that's actually put protecting London black cabs on your manifesto. And, and on behalf of my mm -hmm. viewers and black cab drivers, I'd like to say thank you very much for that. At least yeah. someone's listening and, 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 yeah. and knows the plight that we're facing. Peter, mayoral candidate, if you got elected, what would Peter Gammon's London look like that's different from under Sadiq? Well, I've known London all of my life, but had offices here for 30 years, and I would take it back to as much of what London was beforehand. I think London was much, but London has always been a bit diversified, but it was more united back then. Mm. Uh, it, it was a happy place, it was wonderful. The entertainment was amazing, everything was amazing. Vibrant, now wasn't it? You could get here and there, you, you, you picked up a, a, a taxi at the side, a black cab at the side of the road, you went to the theater or whatever. Now you can't get anywhere, you're stuck in traffic the whole time because of all these bike lanes and because of all this congestion, and, or, or you can't go down this road. And, and uh, everything is a mess. When the BBC asked me the other day, they said, why are you running for mayor? I said, to restore some sanity to London. And I really don't think that the other, most of the other candidates, and maybe it's unkind to talk about them, but I don't think they've got a clue. They're following this green agenda, and I'm green, as we'll, we'll probably get onto that. I am planning to have 10 new parks in London, protect the green spaces, and I've got this thing called Plant a Tree by 23. There's 8 million trees currently in London, and my plan is to put a million more in this, 10 million school kids, to get school kids from all over London to come and plant trees, because trees are the vacuum cleaners yeah. uh, of the planet. Um, every beech tree, absorb, every a, a petrol car, for example, uh, it, it puts out something like four tons of CO2. A beech tree sucks in 40 tons. So the obvious answer is to have trees everywhere cleaning up the planet, putting out oxygen, not to take some poor old couple's car away from them, because this is one of my things, and my, my campaign is a conscience-driven campaign. I'm not running for mayor because I have political ambitions. I don't need to do it. If I don't win as mayor, I'm going for a really long holiday. I'm not doing this uh, for my benefit. Yeah. I'm doing it because I'm for tired. Benefit. Absolutely. I'm doing it for ordinary, hard-working Londoners who are being taken advantage of. Cab drivers have spent the three years uh, learning their way up every street and whatever. They've had to pay to have disabled facilities. And then they're bringing these people in to undercut them who you don't even know if the person driving is the person who's got the license. They've got no insurance. Mm. And, and uh, they're allowing them to undercut them. I think that the current mayor, sorry, I, I just think the current mayor is trying to get rid of black cabs. Do and you? I don't think anybody else that stands a chance of winning is fighting for you. And so no. 
my, my, my campaign is driven by passion, things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate that it's ridiculous that these bicycle lanes that are unused while the traffic's stuck there. It's like an old lady who said that her, her treat was to go once or twice a month to the West End, and now it's twice as much it costs her to get there. And probably twice as long in the traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so these things I'm passionate about, to bring some sanity back to London, to make it a place that's fun to be rather than rules and... Yeah, I can relate to that, because I'm born and bred in London, Kennet and then to Brixton, now I'm, in, I'm out in Bromley. Yeah. But what you're saying there resonates with me because people like my mum and dad or friends of the family yeah. that I speak to, they all say the same thing. They think, oh, I can't go into London. Mm. They used to get the, you know, go up to London, get a show, and I'm not talking about the yeah. pandemic, I'm talking yeah. about enjoy it was, how enjoyable yeah. it was to go up to London, have something to eat out, yeah. go to the theatre, move around around yeah. London. Yeah. And after this pandemic, we need to make London open and get back to Absolutely. work. Absolutely, yes. Where the present mayor seems to think that we can all do without cars. If you're going to bring yeah. a car in, it's 30 quid a day. Yeah. So how will that affect poor families? Yeah. Um, what all of these... It's the opposite of common sense policies. Conservatives, they spent 250 million, don't forget, whatever their candidate may say, they spent 250 million on bicycle lanes and, and low, L, 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 LTs, LTN. They, they spent 250 million of taxpayers' money on this. They're all, they're all got the same green agenda, Labour, the Green Party, who'd have all the men locked up by six o'clock, the Liberal on Democrats, you know, they've all got the same agenda. That's why I really am standing, because I'm the only alternative if you don't want more of that madness. If at the end of it, people vote that they want more bike lanes, they want more LTNs, they want more of all of this happening to London, they want, and this is it, they're penalizing people purely because they're poor. They're saying, you can't afford an electric car, so we're gonna charge you 25 quid a day. That's a major part of people's salary. They are callous because the Labour Party Originally, when my mum was a support of the Labour Party, they were the party for hard-working people, but they're yeah. not now. They've been taken over by these uni graduates with all their airy-fairy kind of uh, idealistic it things. It was the working classes yeah. political but, it's, but they're not anymore. They're that's the champagne, gone. champagne socialists. Yeah, that's gone. And, and, and uh, people need to realise that. Um, some people are surprised that over 120 of London's black ministers, black pastors, have come out backing me as their candidate of choice. Because well, you say that. You say that about black ministers, right? I've got to say it to you, Peter. Yeah. UKIP, Nigel Farage, people that look at UKIP and say, oh, they're just a bunch of right-wingers. What would you say to them? Well, that's what the left wing have said. Anyone, any, anyone slightly, slightly right of Karl Marx is an extreme right to them, you know. Um, and and that's, that, that's it. You know, they get all their stories from The Guardian. Someone came to me with this story about this person who was supposed to have done this Twitter and was supposed to have been a member of UKIP. And so we went back and we checked up. There was no one, uh, no member with that name. You're going against the you know, establishment. Yeah, no absolutely. One, yeah. And that is the heart of UKIP. We stood against the establishment. It was formed to say no more because the, the people, especially for example up north, they, 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 were, they wanted to leave the EU, and maybe we'll touch on that at the moment, they wanted to leave the EU, but their MP who they'd elected was voting to remain. And so UKIP was formed 28 years ago. Some people don't realize that it's been a 28 year fight. And that's why I want you to vote for me because I'm someone and UKIP, the heart of UKIP is fighting for people. It wasn't about Brexit primarily, it was about democracy. What we fought for was a referendum. We said the people need to decide, not the politicians. Yeah. And so we're still fighting. That's why I'm fighting, as I say, I'm fighting for cab drivers. Uh, uh, so I'm, yeah, for black cab drivers, I'm fighting for cladding victims. I'm fighting for anybody. I'm fighting for that mum and dad and family who can't just go out and buy a new electric car. So they're getting hit when they go to work every day with fines by the Labour Party leader just because they're poor and can't afford to, or, or can't afford to go out and buy. Who can afford to do it? And it's funny, you saying about with you, Kip, the, the the people that, the, the working people wanted to leave the EU, the elected politicians wanted to stay. Yeah. And, and when you look at London now, you've got people living in local authorities that don't want these LTNs, yeah. causing massive damage to yeah. local businesses yeah. and, and, and just regular families. But the elected yeah. councillors are saying, no, you will have these LTNs. 
and Boris is funding it with the mayor. Yeah. I mean, it's just gone crazy, London, well, isn't it? I think, we, I think the Conservative Party is no longer Conservative. It's green. You know? When you look about it, yeah, I saw, I saw a funny thing. It said uh, that the Green Party have announced their, their, new, their new leader, and there was a picture of Boris Johnson. I think his girlfriend's having a big influence on him. But um, Listen, uh, no one it's certainly wants, not his hairdresser. No one wants, <laughs> no one wants no. to live in a polluted place, right? No. But there's ways that you go about it. Well, the other thing is, what they're doing, these LTNs, they're taking the wealthier streets and putting flower pots up and putting ball ballads up to, so that somebody said, I want my children to be able to play in the street. You've got to be a bit loony if you want your kids to play in the road. Roads are not for kids to play. There are places for kids to play. So they're taking these exclusive places, they're the multi-million pound homes, they're closing these streets, and then they're sending them down other streets with poorer families, or past even worse. Past the housing estates. Yeah, past yeah. the housing estate and past the schools. Yeah. Yeah, but then it puts their houses up while Sam, Samantha yeah. and Tabitha yeah. play outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. When they come but to sell the house, oh, it's a traffic-free yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. We have yeah. breakfast on the pavement, yeah? <laughs> and we have croissants on the table. Yeah. Um, I'll just quickly touch on, there's a cab driver who works nights sometimes. I've got to say, I've never felt so scared in, in London. Yeah. You see violence going on on the streets, fights on traffic. I mean, and yeah. there's no police stations open. No. What's your view well, on if you, protecting Again, London? if you've seen my policies for policing, there are a number of things. Number one, I plan to open substations again in every community. Every community needs, even if it's a small office manned by two or three people, every community needs people that have direct access to them 24-7. It's no use if, if somebody's beaten their wife up having to call and send someone from the centre center of London to come to her. So you want to I think that, so, Yeah, absolutely. They should be spread around. Okay. You know, now they've got them all in, in one or two locations with riot shields. You know, that's... Are, are we going to let it come to the place where London, it, it, you have to have riot police to go out? And so substations everywhere need to be reopened. People need to be able to go when something happens and report yeah. it. An old person isn't going to be able to go online and report a crime. No. You know, they need to be able to have some, you know, by the time the police so you, get there. So you recognise that London is becoming lawless yep. more than ever before. And oh, you've absolutely. got to do something yeah, about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah? Peter, we've spoke about policing in London. You've said about the substations, rising crime everywhere. You're going to put all these little stations around with officers in. But, but you've got other views on the way that the Met is actually run in London, haven't you? Yeah, the police commissioner has to go. Along with the mayor, they've failed London. Cressida Dick. Yeah, we're talking yeah, yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to go. They've lost. They've lost London's confidence. You know, the two-tier policing that goes on in London is disgusting. One group they take the knee to another group they take the truncheon to. I've been there to some of the peaceful rallies, the, 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 the anti-lockdown rallies, and the police go in with riot gear and beat people and grab old ladies and arrest them and throw them to the ground. And It's got out of hand. It's not the way to deal with it. And uh, it, I've opposed lockdown all along. I think it's ruined, ruined the nation. The, the, yeah. the government have been taking their salaries every month and they haven't cared about the cab drivers and all the other people. They've actually helped the hospitality industry out, but they don't realize that it's the cab drivers who take people to the restaurants and the shows. Mm -hmm. They haven't done enough. And, uh, but they've been happy because they've been getting their checks every yeah. month while other people have been struggling. And so we have to do it. We're, the, people have lost confidence in the police. We have to rebuild trust. That's why I believe very strongly in police on the beat, on the street, meeting with the people. Half the crimes that take place would never take place because the police would either hear about it or see it beforehand yeah. or know who they're looking out for. They'd know the places to go to. And so, and, and uh, I've said something which some people were surprised, but, but I, I think we need as well to uh, have uh, police that uh, reflect the ethnicity of certain areas. So it's not three white police going in and arresting a black kid, which causes the problems. The whole policing of London needs to be re-examined and redone. And if you was elected mayor, you would have a, 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 what, a, a branch and reform of, of the a root and branch reform of the Met. Absolutely, it needs totally. The police are no longer seen as the friends of the people. And if the police are not seen as your friends, when I, when I grew up, the, the police, you, you didn't do anything wrong because you, you realized that they, they had power to do something about it. But they were your friends. You knew they were there when you needed them. That is no longer there. They're all huddled up and they're stuck in big vans with riot shields when it, things, 
not even when things get out of hand because the, these peaceful rallies have not I'm not talking about the Kill Bill ones you know that that's yeah I, I'm sure they're the organized by the left yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah and on, on all of those kind of things they're not people that are trying to cause a riot they're just people that are standing up for their own civil rights they're oh saying boy, that the government has overstepped the mark and and I believe they have they've taken away people's civil rights it's all and, about and, democracy and and, people, and, and, and that's the heart of UKIP we are the party and the only party that stands up for freedom of speech for free for small minimum government involvement in people's lives people don't realize these are the things for greater pensions fighting for the working class these these are the things that you get fought for we do not just a one party uh, one policy party we were fighting for many things scrapping tv licenses and things like this we've had many policies that we've fought for and many of them which the government has actually adopted for example we fought for 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 no vat on female products and the government recently bought in it but for eight years before the government introduced that ukip was pushing for things like so that so if people think oh ukip it's a uh, it's just a one-trick pony immigration or brexit that's not the case, is it? No, it isn't. No, there are many things. And, and you mentioned the immigration. It's nothing to do with racism. It's to do with the space that we have, that you don't invite somebody home if you haven't got room for them. And if the family already don't have bedrooms and all sleeping on the sofa. You, you, it's, it's to defend, we have to, we, the left, they, they're like, we, we have to preserve the environment. Well, if you're gonna invite 300,000 new people into England every year, you're gonna lose your green space. You can't have it both ways no. if you're gonna provide housing. So we, it's nothing to do with, with people from other countries, and neither has anything to do with the people that are here now. The people that are here now are as British as I am, whatever their background or ethnicity. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing racist at all about it. It's saying we have to be sensible. If we're gonna invite a lot more people here, how are we gonna feed them? How are we gonna house them? Because there's old ladies whose families will be watching this. who have been waiting two years to get into hospital for an, for an operation. We cannot deal with the people we've got. We cannot pay the bills. We're in so debt what you're as saying a nation. Is we got to have a we got to have a sort of grown up conversation. Yeah. If that's the way we want to go, yeah, we have to be sensible. And and uh, these are compassionate things. They're not hardline. Oh, we don't want people here. We're talking about UKIP supports people who are genuine uh, here for because they're persecuted. Their life is at risk in other countries. Things like that. What I'm talking about are economic right migrants who come through other European countries to get to England because they get a better deal. Because the European law is you have to stop in the first European country you enter, but these people don't. They come to Britain because they, they get a better deal. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that. And I, I fought for and had uh, attorney lawyers working to help people get their paperwork in order so that they can stay. They've been here 10, 20, 30 years. You know, uh, because there are many people that they've spent their whole life here, but the paperwork isn't in order. And I have real compassion for those people. Yeah. We're not talking about it. Actually, as far as race is concerned, uh, UKIP is putting forward for the assembly in London the most diverse group of candidates. Any we have Muslim, we have Jewish, we have Christian, we have Black, we have White, we have Indian. Half of my candidates for the for the. Uh, London Assembly are from different ethnic backgrounds. So there's nothing racist at all about it. London is a multicultural society, and that's a beautiful thing. And that's reflected by UKIP's And that's re re reflected by that. It's only, as I say, the left that want to, because they know that we represent the working class in a way they used to and no longer do. So they throw out all these false accusations yeah, okay. and things, but they're not true. Okay. We Thanks are the that. common sense party. We're the party that's fighting for the ordinary, hard working person who's trying to put food on the table and have a holiday once or twice a year. So some of the things that I want to do, again, I want to open youth centres as well, youth, oh, youth, youth, youth centres everywhere. Have a youth club in because, Brixton. Yeah, because, that's all shut down. Yeah, huh? Well, it's ridiculous. No there money. is nothing for the kids to do, so they end up in fights on the street. And here is another important one. I was pointing this out on the BBC today. The youth leaders were between the police and the youth. Yeah. So that they could, they could quiet the kids down so they didn't get in their crime, or deal with the police if, and say, we'll sort it out with the kids. But now there's nothing between them, so the kids go straight from committing a crime and being arrested and, yeah, and, and, right. and whatever. We, 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 and when you is, think that under Boris as mayor, they spent 57 million on the Garden Bridge, not one brick was laid. No. How much would 57 million pounds have done for youth centres in London. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It might not be the answer, well, yeah. but it, it sure as hell would have spends about a million a year on public relations, which is basically his whole campaign, and they say he's winning the polls. What do you expect? He's spending taxpayers' money to tell everyone how wonderful he is, and yet I've never actually met a person who said he is yeah. wonderful, or they are happy with it, but yeah. I don't know. We're going to get on to the cab specific. A few questions I'd like to ask 
you to answer I've got written down here but just quickly housing London's growing yeah. getting bigger although a lot of people left in the pandemic but yeah. what's your answer to uh, the housing problem in London? Well, I was born and raised on a council estate we, 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 we were going to mention that you know um, do we need more social housing? Yeah, definitely. We need we need more social housing. Of course, we do. There's eight hundred thousand people on waiting lists for social housing, and uh, so we need more social housing. We need more affordable housing, especially at entry level. Oh. And that's why uh, the team that are with me today, and we've been literally going around site by site. I'm looking at over a hundred derelict and abandoned sites in London, and my plan is to build a uh, hundred thousand starter homes at a hundred and fifty thousand now Sean um, Bailey said no nah. a hundred thousand for a hundred he did say yeah, that yeah he, he did, did, he did, he did, he did. but what he didn't tell you and you need to read the small print of these stories is that that is a fraction ownership in other words you don't own the house you own a little tiny part of it you have a landlord who owns most of it you'll never be able to sell it easily because yeah. this guy's a Unfortunately, the, 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 Tor the Tories' campaign has been full of deception from the letter he sent out yeah. pretending that he was com coming from City Hall to his big thing, I'm going to build 100 houses for 100,000. He ain't going to build 100,000 or 100,000. He's probably going to build them at 200,000 above what they would be if you were buying them. So there's extra padded in there for the Tory building companies. Because it's we fractional drive ownership. I'm talking about total ownership. Yeah, I'll drive around in the cab and... There's like building explosions going on around London, but they're like apartments that start at like yep. 700,000 oh. luxury blocks. There's nothing for teachers, no. firemen, policemen, workers. You know, no. We've just been air, air, airbrushed out of London's yeah, future. Yeah, 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 it's ridiculous. Olympic Park could have built so much afford affordable housing yeah. and social housing. But it ends up that these multi-million and some of the developers they 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 only do it because they can make billions yeah, yeah. out of it. Well, I don't want those kind of builders in London. Let's get the normal builders who can build and make a little profit on every house and be happy with it. Let's get them to be the builders of these things. Okay. And and, and support big business. Let's get rid of these big development companies that uh, have to make a million on every other on, on every property. So, we've touched yeah. on policing. We've touched on housing. I'm coming to public transport. Mm. Black Cams was always in the, for want of a better word, the public transport family. Yes. Sadiq Khan has slung us out. Yeah, terrible. His, his public transport now is, uh, I think, buses, cycling, walking. We're out. Yeah. And though we've always been in, we're out. Yeah. If you got a mayor elected, would we be in or out under you? Oh, you'd, you'd be in. You'd be central. I 100% believe that black cabs need to be central to... To, to London's transportation system. As I'm growing up, and, and uh, somebody wrote to me the other day and said that I was a dinosaur, and I said, well, I think you're more of a dinosaur. But the, but the reality is the, you only use buses if you couldn't afford anything else. Nobody wants to sit huddled up with other people, getting cold in the winter, having to change three or four times to get the place you want to and still having to walk part of the way. And also, we're talking earlier, you're talking about planting trees, right? We've got to cut yeah. congestion, we've got to cut emissions. Then if you if you if that's serious, then we got a hundred thousand mini cabs, which are privately owned vehicles with just a a, a phone stuck on the window screen. Mm. If you cut the number of private hire vehicles, cut in the number of private vehicles coming into London, use the black cabs more. Yep. Get rid of car usage in London. Yep. Use the services, public services, and the cabs. Then. It, that's a much better idea, isn't it? Well, absolutely. And they've, they've, they've made the, most of the black cabs go, go so-called electric, which I say so-called electric because it's ridiculous. They've forced you into getting these so soon when it's undeveloped that you only can do 30 to 50 before they have to be recharged to go back to petrol. And so, the infrastructure's not yeah, there. No, yeah, they absolutely. promised us everything. Five vehicles. Uh, Michelle Dix, a TFL, said at a yeah. meeting to taxi drivers that you'll be tripping, them out, you'll be tripping over charge points. Yeah. Well, they're like unicorn teeth, right? But yeah, yeah. complete fabrication. And they're pushing, they're pushing Uber and things, which are just cars. Yeah, cars that are, that are far more polluting the atmosphere. Well, you say that, Peter. I've done an FOI request, uh, and there's forty-two thousand diesel mini cabs, and nine thousand black cabs. So there's four times as many diesel mini cabs as black yeah, cabs, yeah. but. You ever watch a, a show on the BBC News or anything <laughs> where they talk about pollution? 
they use the same image of a black cab driving down the road, yeah. point the finger yeah. at the yeah. black yeah. cab. No one wants to talk facts. Yes. They always want to talk fiction. And while we're talking yeah. about yeah. facts and fiction, age limits. We had unlimited years. Then under Boris, he brought it to 15. Now Sadiq Khan has scrapped three years off the age limit yeah. of a perfectly reasonable, yeah. reliable, clean taxi. Yeah, yeah. Would you yeah. still take the age years off of us? No, no, I'd move it back up again. So yeah. 15 years yeah, yeah, yeah. would come at, back At least in 15, all. definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous because it's so hard to, to make a profit where with all the costs that are there, especially if you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're buying or renting, renting a cab. And, and we've touched the points on LTNs. You're against yeah. LTNs. I'm against LTNs. LTNs. Had a lot of hate from it. I'm against the bike lanes too. You know, the bike the cyclists rarely stay in their lanes anyway. And uh, it's ridiculous. The roads in London were built for, for trams and for, for horse and carts. They weren't built for cars. And now they're taking half of London's car space away and put bus lanes in. And of course, one of my things that I've talked about a lot is where, where, where buses go, cabs go. And, uh, uh, you know, They've slowed slowed everything down. It's ridiculous. I'm often filming with the whole bicycle lane empty, empty or the yeah, bus lane empty. The best running empty. tracks in and, London. Uh, yeah, are. yeah. And the thing is, right? We we'll, we would all admit and say, well, you know, if you want to cycle, it's got to be safe, right? Yeah. But the fact that they would take half the road space instead of saying, look, we take a little bit off the pavement, yeah. and we still get two lanes of traffic. Yeah. Instead, they, they cut one lane, mm -hmm. you've got the traffic flow, and they're saying, look at that congestion. Oh, these cars. But they've yeah. caused the congestion Absolutely. with their road planning. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all, but they, they just want to get rid of any kind of vehicles. And, and they're, they're, most of them are weird people. You know, it's, they've come up and complain to me with their bicycle clips on, and they don't even take their bicycle clips off to complain. You know, there's only a certain type of person that's going <laughs> to, as I said the other day on an ITV interview, I said, we don't live in Amsterdam. You yeah. know, who, there's only a certain type of person who wants to arrive at work soaking wet tired and, uh, and freezing cold you know some people will do it because that's their religion that's what they want to do well that's, that's thing. what they want to do you know what i'd say to try you... and force everybody else to do it a mother with kids she can't do that no. you know somebody who's doing the shopping uh, you know the the builder he's going to put his ladder it, on his it's bike it's not for everyone no and there, there was a a survey the other year during the pandemic and it said a hundred and seventy seven thousand people call themselves cyclists like every day, mm -hmm. cycle to work. When you think London has got a population of 8 million and only 177,000 people say, mm -hmm. I'm a cyclist, yeah? How have they had nearly a billion pounds spent on them by, from Khan mm -hmm. and Boris mm -hmm. as mayors? Where's that money gone? Yeah, I Couldn't read something the other day. 5,000 per person. Yeah. yeah. And, and what about the bikes that de that's Cause so the accidents and damage. So we cars, shut police have have? stations, yeah? yeah? People have never been so scared. Cut, shut yeah, all yeah, police stations, yeah. youth clubs, public services under threat, yeah. but let's spend a billion on good old cycle lanes. Like it's you said, it's, it's about what you said about your campaign, bringing sanity and common sense back yeah, in. Yeah. You said to me just now about common sense about the London lottery. I thought it was a great idea. Yeah. Do you want to tell the viewers? Yeah, yeah well, they, uh, one of the things that I said was to, f to, to freeze council tax. And uh, they asked me how I would do that. And I said, I've already set up the London lottery. And the London lottery will make new millionaires in London every week. And 100% of the profit will go back to projects in London. So we can finance many of the projects in London. So uh, nobody will make 20 million. There'll be a cap of a million prize. It'll be easier to win than the national lottery. A million lottery. a week. And we'll make new millionaires every, every week and, and uh, put, bring amazing revenue into London. Several billion a year that the national lottery makes. And I think many people would, would get on board and we'd yeah. be able to raise billions for it. And if you knew that buying a ticket, you was helping youth clubs, Absolutely. old people, centres. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I came up with a solution to homelessness as well. And the Greens and, and Labour mocked me for it. But what have they done? Because I still meet hundreds of people that are yeah. living on the streets. And what is it? This is, this is it. Back in 1940, when the Bellum disaster took place, uh, Churchill immediately had uh, 
10 emergency underground, sh underground shelters built that could house up to 100,000 people. And they, like the one at Clapham South, they empty today. The one at Clapham South is a massive area which can house up to 8,000 people. I said, let's turn them into... I'm not talking about putting so what, what was it? The green, the, the, green, the, the green said to me putting them in boxes. I'm not talking about bo boxes. I'm talking about ensuite bathroom bedrooms, ensuite bedrooms and restaurants. So if it's cold, no one if some people if they want to sleep on the street, but if it's cold, no one will ever need to sleep on the streets of London again. No one will ever have to go without a meal again. And there, there's a, there's a Wow. Uh, ten of them across London. They could be being used. We that's have to start. Going, idea, we have to, to go. Yeah. That's a fresh idea. And it's it, and and all my ideas. And I have many of them that are out there. You see, other people talk about the problems. I'm only interested in the solutions. Uh, you know, Bailey keeps talking about the problems of crime. We all know that's there. I have solutions for that. All kinds of things like like. So if people, Pete, are watching this, think, well, you know what? I'm not quite interested in what he's got to say. Where would they get more information about your manifesto, Twitter? Just go to I Gammons. Can... Remember, it's Gammons, not Gammon. G-A-M-M-O-N-S dot London. Gammons dot London. Here's another one. Uh, there's thousands of miles of unused train lines under London. The post office had 300 trains crisscrossing right. London yeah, yeah, all the yeah. time. The Military of Defence has many train lines that are never, that many tunnels that are unused today. They can go from Buckingham Palace, Tenderdale, and many other places. There's 30 uh, uh, closed down um, stations in central London, 30 of them. So there's thousands of miles of that. And so I put out a challenge to have, I, I had this idea for an underground pod system. I hadn't been declared as the UKIP candidate at the time, and so I couldn't make the announcement. And then, I, totally out of the blue, I didn't even know they were working on it, uh, and this is the honest truth, um, what's his name, Elon Musk and Richard Branson both announced that they're, they're coming up with pods, but I'd already talked about the, my underground pod system, where people will get in these, these pods, is how I envisage them for maybe four people at a time. They're tight where they want to go, tap the right card, and whew, it'll crisscross London as an underground transport system because we, we've taken up the space above let's think of what we can do underground because there's tons of place underground unused so these two ideas that you just said about homeless people getting somewhere to live and the pod system i mean very fresh new ideas i mean and, and you'd say that you wouldn't expect that from yeah. a UKIP campaign, you know what I mean? Well, someone think about it. It was, only, bigger... it was only 120, 130 years ago that someone said, how about the inventing a thing called the tube for underground trains? Yeah. And, yeah. and his name was Charles something, he was an MP. And people thought he was crazy for it. But I know my ideas, someone will do them one day. Uh, whether they'll give me credit for it or not, I don't know. We'll but, have but, to wait yeah. and see. <laughs> well, but I have solutions. Other people have problems. Well, I'm a candidate for London. Pete is the one for solutions. Yeah? <laughs> Get London working. Open London up. Yeah, yeah. You've got loads of ideas. Yeah, yeah. And they can see you at Peter Gammons. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gammons dot London. Gammons for London. Well, I don't know about you, but I've really enjoyed the interview today. We've spoken about a lot of subjects mm. and you've told everyone where you stand. Mm. And that's a great thing. Let the public decide. Absolutely. If you've got one message, Peter, for voters who have watched this and think... Yeah. Get out and vote. Many people, they don't think that there's any choice. They're like, oh, he's no better than the other. Get out and vote. Vote for me. Vote for UKIP. Especially voting for UKIP for the London Assembly. Because it, otherwise, if these other people get in, you're going to have nobody that's going to stand up for you. Vote UKIP for the London Assembly and for Mayor. Then even if I don't get Mayor, I'll be there to be a voice for you. Thank you very much for watching. Peter, thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank Thanks. You. Well, there you go. That's Peter Gammons of UKIP looking to be your next mayor. As you see, he had a lot of opinions and a lot of new ideas. So if you go and watch in this and press the like, press the subscribe, and more importantly, leave a comment and tell us what you think of Peter Gammons. Thanks for watching.